Okay, this question is from Jason Hall. My question is, why do people care about what watts panels produce? Surely all that matters is the amps they produce, as everything is measured in amps and milliamps for power consumption. Well, that would be true, except for you need to know the amount of power you're producing. And amps in itself is only one power of power. So power is voltage times amps. And because you can have different voltage systems on a boat, for example, 12 volt and 24 volt, one amp on a 12 volt system means 12 watts. One amp on a 24 volt system means 24 watts. And so watts is really the only way to compare apples to apples. Otherwise you're comparing apples to oranges or something like that. That's the main reason. That makes sense. Um, this is quite of a, a, a long question, but I'll try and sum it up. It's from my.com guy, or Brandon. He basically uh, has a power boat. He says, I hope you don't mind this coming from one of your power boat supporters. Man, I love power boats. What are you <laughs> talking about? Yeah. Um, he wants to put on two solar panels and possibly two wind generators on top in hopes of powering a fridge and a freezer and also hoping to be able to power his stereo without turning on the generator. He's always wondered if the solar and wind would just extend the life of the battery to a few more hours before needing the generator or if it would allow me to run all the time. I know that's a... depends on a lot of things, but you can talk about it. Yeah. Uh, well, I think it's obviously we're doing it. I know a lot of other people that are doing it, so it's definitely doable and possible. I think it comes down to the type of fridge and freezer that you have. Um, if it's a full-on household fridge, then you might need more than one or two solar panels. But um, I think the you know the amount of power that our fridge and, and freezer takes with our three solar panels, we can run them indefinitely without any problem in fact the whole boat we can run indefinitely without any problem and can we run the ac off of that no so the ac is a different ball game to put it in perspective each we have three ac units on the boat each one of them take 1000 watts um, so the difference between a fridge or a freezer uh, ours are probably taking uh, about 50 watts to 60 watts so, um, you know, you could run one freezer for 20 hours or one AC unit for one hour, something like that, I think would be kind of the trade-off there. Okay. Do you have some kind of 12-volt adapter for your laptop so you plug them directly into 120? Uh, we've been asked this question quite a bit. Is It mm. is actually more efficient to charge a laptop off of DC. I mean, the primary reason is if you feel this charger, it's like, hot. It's hot, which yeah. means the electrical energy is being wasted by the, the coils that turn this from AC to DC. But we have so much power on Delos. Um, but it would be more efficient to have it, a 12 it would, volt it adapter. It would definitely be more efficient. If you could find something that would regulate the power to the voltage that your laptop takes, I don't know if you'd find it for Apple, but probably for different types of PCs, I think it would probably save you some power. Um, or you could just add a little bit more solar. And the, the other thing is I didn't want a bunch of DC outlets around too, because we already have enough cables and charging points on Delos. Imagine if we then had like AC outlets and then DC outlets yeah. and then different voltages of DC outlets everywhere. It'd be out of control. So. Okay. This is from Roger Martin. What's the charging voltage limit of the solar and wind systems on board? Would it be possible to maintain a 48 volt battery pack? So, I think it would be possible to maintain a 48 volt battery pack. Uh, you would have to find a 48 volt charge controller. Um, That's his second question. Would it be more practical to have 24 or 48? I definitely think 24 is more practical. Um, because you can find 24 volt pumps, you can find 24 volt fans, you can find 24 volt controllers, chargers, whereas 48 volt is a little bit more specialized. I've never seen a 48 volt anything in a typical marine store, although everybody has 12 volt and occasionally they'll have 24 volt stuff. So if I were to do it all over again, 
I would have the gigantic, huge draw things like the inverter, the bow thruster, the windlass, the winches, the furlers, run off 24 volts. Yeah. I would have all the smaller things like the fridges, the freezers, the fans, the lights, uh, and everything else run off 12 volt because yeah. you can find them anywhere. Everybody has them. And, they, and the, the savings in power, I mean, the, you don't really need that big of a wire for a fan, so it doesn't really matter. The main difference between 12 and 24 volt is you can carry the same amount of power but with, with a much smaller wire because the voltage is higher. Okay, one more question from Anthony Tatum. You ready for it? Ready. We had four deep cycle batteries on the last boat with 200 watts of solar. After only a year or so, they would drain like nobody's business and were and barely ran anything. Inverter to charge one laptop with minimal lights on. I'm sure at some point I messed up the batteries. How do you ensure that you don't either overcharge or overdrain your batteries? What are, we are going to have quite a bit more on demand on our next boat, and I don't want to mess things up again. Yeah, it sounds like they were standard lead acid batteries and they just got continually taken down low, which you know, over a period of a year, if you cycle them once a day, you can easily wreck a lead battery by taking them below like 70% or something. Probably he took them down, I'm guessing 30%, 40%, something like that. Um, how to avoid that? Well, uh, you could increase your charging capacity. So 200 watts of solar could easily be doubled um, by adding, you know, another panel. I mean, a 200 watt panel is about the size of this table. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't have room, maybe you do. Um, probably the number one thing would be installing a, a good battery monitoring system. So you can look at the voltage and know if you're taking your lead acid batteries too low and then either, you know, charging, running the generator or, or something like that. Um, but yeah. And finally, maybe installing lithium. Yes, that would definitely help. Although it's, it is quite an investment. Yes. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is from Bob Camp. We had a bit of a question mix up here, but somebody asked this. Uh, is the solar structure that you have stopping you from storing the dinghy on the back of the boat, or you just want that area open? Ooh, I think Maggie is just too big of a beast to be hung from that arch really yeah we tried it and it almost it, it just didn't feel right so we took it down there's definitely room back there there's definitely room if you had a I think lighter if you inflatable, had a dinghy. Normal inflatable hypolon dinghy with a smaller outboard it's definitely doable what is the make and model number of your inverter Ooh, it is a victron 3000 volt amp uh inverter charger Don't 3000 know volt amp VA is the same oh. as a lot, really. Okay. Uh, would there be a way to incorporate water collection system using the surface area of the solar panels? Yes, we have done that in the past. <laughs> and uh, it, it works. I mean, it's sometimes we go through periods without, when's the last time it rained a lot? I don't even remember. Yeah. So we just run the water maker. But yeah. Is there a difference between water collection and the water maker? taste or power usage that would make you want to change to water collection versus making? Yes, uh, the water maker has absolutely zero taste and zero mineral content. So it's not nutritionally the best for you, I guess. It just has a lack of minerals and salts. Um, it's also not good for watering plants because it has no minerals in it either. No goodness. Um, yep. So the water, the rainwater definitely has a better taste to it, I think, depending on where you are. Okay. Um, have you ever had any issues with the fixed solar panels in bad weather? Our local installer is suggesting we go with flexible panels so we can take them down in a hurry if we find ourselves in 50 plus knots. Seems to me that you've weathered quite a few storms and been quite fine. Yeah, I mean that thing's been through I don't know how much wind. I know we saw 70 something knots in Richards Bay across the yeah. Indian Ocean sailing. We saw routinely 50 plus waves knots have crashed for days on it. On end. Waves have hit it. I think it's been fine. Yeah. I think you'd probably find yourself not taking the flexible panels down anyway. At least that's what I my gut instinct says. Like, just 
bolt them down good, screw them down good, and yeah. call it a day. We did take them off for hurricane storage, though, um, in which case it's pretty much a wash, right? Yeah. Okay. Two questions from Alan Hansen. Is your new battery pack physically the same size as your old one? And if not, would you consider adding additional batteries to top it off, so to speak? So yes, it is physically the same size. It's slightly smaller uh, height-wise, but it's pretty much a drop-in replacement for a standard 100 amp hour. What about battery. weight? It is about 50% of the weight. Mm. So I think each of these uh, Lithium cells, they weigh about 13 kilos each, and I think the lead ones were 22 or 21 kilos. So lighter and smaller. So what it's, about safety? Uh, I think if you treat them the way that you're supposed to, I think they're perfectly safe. They're uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries, which is a much more stable chemical internal structure. It has a lower energy density than the batteries that you'll find in like a laptop or a phone or an electric car or something like that um, but because it has a lower energy density it's a little bit more stable yeah um, so as long as you watch the temperature uh, and you watch the voltages it's they're, they're pretty solid in fact I have run uh, measured the temperature of the batteries while charging at full capacity for all of our chargers which is putting in like almost 4,000 watts of power yeah and I touched them after like doing that for an hour and guy there was no difference really no difference at all um, because if you think about it even when we're taking the maximum load out of the batteries that we can or we're putting in the maximum charging that we can we're not exceeding uh, 20 to 25 percent of what they're capable of yeah. So each bank would be capable of 100 amps, is what they're tested at. We have four banks run in parallel, which means that we could provide 400 amps of power out of those batteries, and we rarely take over 100 to 150 amps. Yeah. So we're operating like the a third of the rated capacity, Yeah. which I think is pretty safe. Yeah. Does that answer your question, Blue? Yep. Okay, uh, the next question from Alan Hansen. Why did you choose the inverter you did? It was provided as a package by Justin. He's like, okay, we got these batteries, we got this inverter, we got this battery management system. That was pretty much it. <laughs> no I, I looked at it and I was like, oh, it looks, it looks like a good inverter unit. Yeah. Cool. I'm happy with the choice, though. I think it's a... It's a great product. Uh, Pete is asking, I'm curious how hard it was to run the wires and the challenges you had getting the proper size wires hung and landed on the terminals. Also, what kind of terminals do you use? Crimp, solder, or both? So, the luckily, uh, Amel does an extremely good job at running cables, and the cables they put in are of sufficient size. Mm -hmm. um, because the only cable I did have to replace was the cable to the inverter. Because we went from a 1,000 watt inverter to like a 3,000 watt inverter. Massive. And so I needed to put a bigger, a bigger feed wire to it. But because we're on a 24 volt system, the wires don't have to be as big as if you're running it on 12 volt. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what I generally do is when I need a new cable, I just measure the length. I go into you know, Budget Marine and Grenada, and they will always, I've never went into a store that they won't do this. They even do to Island Water World. They'll put ends on it for you. They'll heat shrink it. They have the gigantic crimping machine. They'll cut the wire. They'll put the crimps on it and they'll like that, heat shrink it all up. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, so that's what I do. Otherwise you have to carry that, that big crimper around, right? Yeah. But I don't think you can solder, smaller ones all solder, but not the gigantic battery lugs. Yep. It's just too much. Crimp them. If you like the video and you like the topics, please uh, be sure to like it on YouTube. Leave a comment. That really helps us to know whether we're on the right track with making the videos that you want to see. 
And most importantly, we're still releasing videos on a weekly basis. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do it. Make sure that you get all the videos uh, from us as a notification. And it really, really, really helps us in our YouTube demographics and stats and things. So thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good one.